Hey makers and welcome to another project. You see, I'm constantly trying to improve my YouTube channel. So I'm trying to find new ways to present my projects and how to film them. And lately I stumbled upon this amazing rotating turnable table 360 degrees for photography on Amazon. And I thought it's kind of amazing and I need to get one. But the price is kind of expensive for me. So I decided to make my own. Luckily, I found one on Thingiverse. And after watching the video included in the representation, I thought this is perfect. Plus, it looks very easy to make, very easy to assemble, and does not need a lot of material. And as the quote says, if the wheel exists, you don't need to reinvent it. But don't worry, we are not going to stick with this design, we are going to make change into it. More on that later. So the first thing to do was to 3D print all the parts. But this is where the problems start coming. I used a very old filament that I bought for cheap. So the first print did not print well. So I had to print it again. After some sanding, I mean a lot of sanding, I put the thing together. It was very easy to assemble and really does not need an engineering degree to figure this out. Now this is where problems started coming in bulk. As I tried to make this thing rotate, it was very hard. Each time I tried to turn it, I had the feeling that this thing will break on my hands. It was very wobbly and it needs two hands to make it work. One to fix it and one to rotate it. Applying a lot of grease did help a lot and with a bit of effort I can turn this around. But it was not perfect. Yes, it can turn but I wouldn't call this a good project. And this is some clips of how this thing works up to this point. If I'm putting something heavy on it, it's gonna work. It's not rotating smoothly but it does the job, kind of. But if I'm trying to rotate something lightweight, it's going to vibrate all over the place. At this point, I thought the problem was in my hands, because I'm not using a constant torque, nor a constant speed. Sometimes I rotate it fast, sometimes I rotate it slow, so I needed something that can rotate in a constant speed and provide a constant torque. For that, I decided to use a motor. But the motor needs to have sufficient torque power, so for that I decided to use the motors that you find on a lot of Arduino project. This thing has a gearbox, so it's perfect to provide a good and a decent amount of torque. To make this work, I had to cut the handle using hot soldering iron. Cutting PLA is very easy, it actually feels like butter. After cutting, sanding and a lot of hot glue, everything was fixed in its place. And I thought I was done, and I was excited to see the results, which, spoiler alert, it was very bad. Having a look at it, yes it does rotate, but it's vibrating a lot. And sometimes you can feel that the motor stops rotating for a split second. And that adds to the vibration. So it's not very pleasant to look at. Yes, I can make some adjustment in the post processing and slow down and smooth it in my video editing software. But I want something better. I want to improve it. So I added more grace and prayed that this will work. But it did not. I came to the conclusion that the plate is wobbling too much and flexing. So I decided to add reinforcement to it. And I thought if I did, I'm going to reduce the vibration and this will fix at least one of my problems. You see, I have a lot of failure parts, but I always keep them in a big bag. You know, for the future, maybe I will buy or build a filament extruder at some point. So I always keep them, but they came in handy like this. So I grab it an old part and try to get it to shape I'm going to use it as a reinforcement for the rotating place. So I got them in small pieces using soldering iron and applied a lot of hot glue. This time I did not apply super glue because I was not sure this is gonna work. So I didn't want something permanent. Yes, hot glue can fix it pretty well, but if I applied enough force and used a very sharp knife, I can easily remove it. But this did not fix my problem entirely. But at this stage, I was very tired. It was like 3 in the morning and I remembered I have a lot of things to do for school. So I thought, okay, this can work. I mean, the end result is not perfect, but it's usable. And this is some clips of how the system worked up to now. It's not perfect, but at least it does rotate, which is good. But then my engineering instincts started to kick in. 
and I thought maybe the problem was in the ring itself. You see, I told you I'm using a very old filament. And with very old filaments, everything is possible. It can deform during printing and all that kind of stuff. Plus, the gear teeth was not smooth in the first place because I printed at a very fast rate and I had some stringing. So, this was expected. So, what I did is I re-3D printed the model and this time I used a good filament. And the end result was good, I mean really good. To be honest, the rotation is a lot smoother and I thought this will fix it and I should be done by now. Yeah, that did not happen. You see, this thing can rotate smoothly if I apply torque with my hands, but when using the motor, it was not smooth at all. I even tried using another motor, which did nothing. And when I tried to use my biggest motor, which I got it from an old drill, my power bench supply shut off automatically because this motor consumes a lot of current. So these two motors were no go. So at this stage, I was mad. I mean, this is the second day working on this project and of course it was 2 a.m. in the morning. But after thinking about it, I came to the conclusion that the transmission gear is the problem. You see, the gear is long and vibrates a lot. So we have a lot of power losses in the transmission. So I thought maybe I can just remodel the design and just use the motor directly without having to use a transmission system gear. So I opened SOLIDWORKS and started modifying the system. The goal is to take the original gear and try to make a hole in it that can fit the motor X in hope of transmission the torque more efficiently. And I had pretty good hope for this. So after spending like 15 minutes using SOLIDWORKS and using an old stock model that I found on GrabCAD for the motor to get the exact measurements for the X, I was done. So I printed the new gear which took around 30 minutes and try to make it fit. The gear fitted perfectly, but then when you try to mount it on the system and trying to rotate it, the motor came off. There was not enough space for the motor to stick to the base. I mean, we need to stick it in a way that it's not going to stick to the rotating gear, so the surface was really small. But after thinking about it, I decided to use the extruded part that used to hold the transmission gear. That surface was big enough for the motor to stick in so I used a lot of hot glue and super glue to make sure that this is not going anywhere. Since we are applying a lot of torque, if I don't apply enough glue, the motor will come flying off. But if you want to make this project, I already made changes in the rotational gear and I added a surface to mount the motor on it. You can glue it using either hot glue or super glue. Either will work fine, but I advise you to use a combination of both super glue and hot glue. Super glue in the middle and hot glue on the sides it's better to be safe than sorry, right? At this point, I was really happy and pleased with the results. The system is working better than ever, so I cut a paper just to make it look better and turn it on the system. And I was really happy with the results. So we fixed the two problems. First, the torque is constant, so we don't have a lot of vibrations. And second, we don't need both hands to stabilize the system. It can stabilize itself by itself. So bingo, this was supposed to be the end of this video and it was like 5 a.m. in the morning. So I went to the bed, I woke up on the same day, which is kind of funny to say it this way. Anyway, I thought that this project was kind of perfect, but it was lacking something. You see, I used my bench power supply to provide 3.3 volts. Yes, this thing works on 3.3 volts, using 5 volts will work, but it's kind of too fast for my taste. So I thought that 3.3 volt is the optimum voltage. So I want to make this portable. You see something that can turn it on and off using a switch and you can move it from place to place without having to carry a bulk power supply. So I decided to use lithium ion battery, which I had some of them laying around. So again, I used SOLIDWORKS and tried to model the box. That will fit the charging model for the battery. That will protect the battery while charging because overcharging this kind of batteries will lead to them getting hot and end up killing them which we don't want that to happen, of course. Plus, this model have a USB port input, so we can charge it using a phone charger. I forgot to add a switch hole in the design, but I already fixed it before I 3D printed. And this is how it came. Of course, after sending it, it was decent. The hole for this switch was a little bit smaller than it should, so I used a hexo knife and made it a little bit larger. Of course, I'm going to fix it in the post and I will make sure to correct this file, which I will upload on Thingiverse and Instructable soon. I'm still changing some stuff. It should be ready soon. So I soldered all the wires, which is kind of tricky, 
And yes, I forgot to adjust the focus point here. Oops. So the charging model sits on the bottom and I made a hole that can fit the USB port. Just make sure that the USB head sits flush with the printed part. And of course, I used more hot glue to fix it in place. I'm using hot glue a lot of my project. So I thought maybe I should change my YouTube channel's name to 10 minutes hot glue crafts. What do you think about that? Of course, I'm kidding about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I put everything together, but the box was a little bit smaller than it should. So I had to bend the switch legs to the left, to the right, and I was afraid that the switch will break, but it worked just fine. The box did not close properly, but I already fixed that in the design, so I made the box bigger to fit the switch, and I made the extruder part longer, so it can stick firmly. But I just needed an elastic band to hold it in place. I mean, theoretically, you don't need to ever open this box again. You can always charge the model using USB and turn it off and on using the switch. So if you want, you can just seal it off with super glue, but rubber band will do the trick too. So it was the time for the final test. And to be honest, I'm very pleased with it. It's very easy to make, even though it took so much time to reach this point but it was definitely worth it. So I'll make sure to include this in more of my upcoming videos. So let me know in the comment below, what do you think? Is this is good? Is this bad? Do you think of anything I can make to improve this design? Now I will leave you with some nice clips. Enjoy and see you in the next project. Oh yeah, don't forget to like and maybe share on Facebook. That will help. And of course, subscribe for more upcoming videos. Stay creative and peace.